Now, I want to show you essentially how to get Burp Suite up and running. Okay, so by default, you have Burp Suite right here. Okay, I don't want to see this. And then it's going to open up Burp Suite, but we cannot just use Burp Suite immediately. Okay, and essentially what I mean by that is that Burp Suite is essentially a proxy, right? That is kind of like man in the middle in your traffic so that you can catch a request and so that you can modify things that you wouldn't possibly necessarily be able to do in normally in a browser, such as like you can modify headers, right? it's the values of headers, etc. And this is what makes proxies very valuable when you're doing well reputation testing. Now, this is a preference thing. The first thing that I like to do is to immediately go onto user interface and then go to display and then just make it bar again. This is just a personal preference, but the proxy tab right here is normally intercepting web traffic again. So let's say that we will go to uh, something like google.com. And as you can see, it has not intercepted anything. That is because we are lacking some things for um, Burp Suite to be able to actually intercept it. Another thing as well, Burp Suite is by default listening on port 8080, okay? So you are seeing this right here just because of Burp Suite running. I didn't close Burp Suite and you would see this disappearing, but I'm not going to do that for now just because of time sakes, okay? So the first thing that we need is a Foxy Proxy uh, extension for Firefox. So I'm just going to download this, add to Firefox. I also wanted to be able to run in private windows, but it doesn't matter too much. Can it the toolbar? Sounds good. And then I want to make a profile for BERT so that I'm actually listening on port 8080. So we go to proxies, we go to add. I'm just going to call this one BERT. HTTP type, that's correct. Country doesn't matter, city doesn't matter. The host name is going to be this, essentially localhost. And then again, we want to be listening on port 8080. Okay. So when we are intercepting now with burp, it will at least try to essentially see, intercept the connection. But because burp suite, uh, we don't have the certificate for burp suite. So it essentially gives us this warning and we want to avoid this. Um, I don't quite remember what the path was. So let me just go to my notes real quick. I mispiped it. But you can also grab my notes as well in the link I'm about you're interested in, but I'm just going to find the, da, 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 the installation path because I forgot the path, the IK. So there we go. I guess I didn't specify it should be, but yeah, here is the certificate for Web Suite. And now we can go to settings. I'm essentially just showing you how to get it up and running because not everyone just knows this and I'm just showing you for, uh, for the sake of teaching and convenience. So we want to go to certificates right there. So click view certificates and then uh, authorities. And then we do want to do import. So, and then as we can see right there, it's in the recent tab from it or in the domains. So I just import this. I want it to identify website and I do not want it to identify in my issues. So I do that and I hit OK and now I've imported essentially the certificate. So if I try to go to Google again, boom, now it works and it's intercepting the traffic again. So now you can use Burp Suite normally, right? You can hit Control R, right? And then you can hit Control Shift R to jump to repeater. You can do Control Space, by the way, to send a request. Uh, that's something extremely useful. A lot of people are just clicking here, but in my opinion, just getting controlled space is a lot more efficient. And then always the burps allow you to like remove headers, so you can customize this to whatever, right? Uh, this you can't really do in a normal browser. You can send a request yet, right? But yeah, I just wanted to show you that in the video because burp suit is very, very useful. And it's especially useful to have in a background, right? So, so let's say that um, this is a normal CTF, right? And we're just kind of like clicking around. I'm seeing different things and constantly in the background, you know, these requests are being logged. And if you go to the targets, you can see that it's mapping the targets related to Google. Okay. 
you can also essentially show uh, on a scoped things. So if you want to go to scope, you can use advanced, and then you can do something like who will not come. And then if you go back to essentially, uh, yes. And if you go back to essentially the target and site map, you can see that it's only showing things related to google.com, right? Um, this domain is technically not with google.com, but because I set a scope as a regex, uh, it does it like some, right? Yeah. So, google.com. That's him. Yeah, like some. And yeah, as you're just making more and more requests, it is essentially logging all of it. And the reason why this might the hand is because of like, oh, the put is this, right? I didn't notice this. This is an interesting little uh, directory right there, the INTO. I didn't know about that, right? And if we just passively do things as you are making requests, it is also possible as well to essentially. <clears throat> To essentially send traffic through a direct UBIT forcing, right? Through the proxy to Brub Suite. So once again, Brub Suite is running on 88 gig, and you can essentially a force request through that proxy so that when we go back here, it will catalog all of those requests that will rally then like months again, kind of like stack deep inside of here. Okay? Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. But once you've completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage of someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused with the offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle, where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.